Hi. Uh, wait a minute. I can't hear you. Ah, uh, you should be able to hear me now. I can now. Okay, I can. I'm good. How's it going? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, we are. Uh, we are live. <laughs> Welcome. I'm pretty nervous. Welcome to the live stream. Um, Thank you. I'm just gonna, we just wait for Will. We have Habib here as well, um, mm -hmm. who will unmute in a second. We have some people watching us on YouTube, and then we go. Hello, guys. Hey, Habib. Oh, sorry, I was uh, I had some problems with my microphone. I just fixed it. No worries. How are will, you guys? Very, very well. Thank you. Will is also here. Hey everybody, how's it going? There we go, guys. We're live. We're live right now on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, we're live. I was so excited about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's literally my first live live answer question. Me too, man. It's new for me as well. This is a, this is a, the way that we're doing things now with lockdown. Yeah, this is this is how we socialize in the days of uh, the days of coronavirus. Yeah, socialize, yeah. promote. Um, right, I'm going to do an intro for the people. Please do. Hello, everyone you, uh, on YouTube. This is uh, Skateism Live, a conversation with free movement skateboarding. I'm here with uh, Will, Habib, and Virginia from uh, Free Movement. Welcome, everyone. Thank you, mate. Now, we did, we, uh, we wanted to do this to basically kind of let everyone know what's going on with free movement to promote the new Everpress t-shirt campaign, a petition you've got going and just to get support because obviously during this time, lockdown's really affected your operation out in Greece. And we'll talk loads about that uh, throughout the uh, conversation. But I guess first, um, some context is obviously that, Will, you and I know each other since we're wee babies. We grew up together. And yeah, we... probably probably 15 years, I reckon. It's been yeah, a long it's time. Long time. And obviously, I was with you guys with Free Movement uh, early on as comms manager. Um, worked with you out in Athens for a little while, uh, which is also why um, I'm doing this conversation rather than anyone else on the team at Skaterism. Um, and yeah, cool. But I think, I guess, let's do go around and do some introductions, shall we? Do you want to start, Will, and tell us about uh, who you are, where you're from, and what, how you got involved with free movement, or rather, started it. <laughs> All that good stuff. But love to. Um, yeah. So uh, my name is Will. Uh, I'm 27. I am from the same town as you, Osh, uh, St Albans, just a little bit north of London. Um, and yeah, uh, alongside my good friend Ruby, uh, we co-founded um, Free Movement Skateboarding uh, about three years ago, a little bit more than three years ago. Um, yeah, so I went to Greece and uh, yeah, to Athens to try and use skateboarding to empower young um, migrants and refugees uh, through yeah through skateboard lessons, and doing this with uh, the key aims of um, so uh, like uh, gender gender equality. Oh no, I need to turn my WhatsApp noises off. Um, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, try to try to do that. Um, I'll do that really really quickly. Uh, yeah, so trying to do everything with um... sorry, right now. Now I've done all my computer bits. Uh, so the kids, so three key aims of uh, free movement are to like sorry, promote gender parity, so to try and get as many um, women and girls involved as possible, and um, present the project with an equal team. Um, also to uh, promote local integration by having as many locals involved in the project um, from instructors, uh, from doing that with as many local kids coming to sessions as possible and also going out on skate park trips. Uh, so uh, helping people meet um, skate local Greek skateboarders from the skate scene and also trying to promote uh, positive mental and physical well-being. So we do that with a little yoga warm-up, we do that with by trying to use like trauma informed care. So, um, you know, trying to be aware that the young people we work with have been through a lot of traumatic, heavy events um, in their lives and, you know, understanding the effects that have on, that has on behavior and trying to um, support them with that. And yeah, uh, it's been three years, 
project has grown an awful lot. Uh, and these two guys have been involved in that in the last the last year or so, maybe a bit longer. For her bit. Yeah, I don't know. Habib, do you want to go next? When when did you get involved in the project? And tell me about yourself. Hello, my name is Habib. I am from Afghanistan. I am 19, I am 19 years old. Uh, two years I'm in Greece and two and a half years I'm, I'm, I'm with moving in underground skateboarding. Yeah, and the first time I saw Will, was, it was in 2018, I think. Where was that? It was in Athens, Greece. Nice. So how did how did you how did you come uh, to be uh, involved closer with free movement? Uh, because uh, I really like I really love skateboarding and to be honest, at the first time in Afghanistan, I was I had a BMX, but and then I came in Greece and I I found the organization Movement on the Ground. Ah, uh, Movement on the Free Movement. Sorry, Free Movement is skateboarding. And I just uh, got to know them, and every week, yeah, every week I was coming there to talk with them, like I was skateboarding. And then, for almost six months, I stopped coming there because I had uh, some things to do. I went to Ireland back, Elizabeth, and yeah. then I came back to Athens. So, I still I still skateboard with them. Awesome. Yeah, man, we saw you a lot of different sessions as well, actually, like, um, you know, or any of the sort of city centre sessions, like, I feel, I feel like I've seen Habib, but different ones, like, loads and loads of times across time. He's, like, very committed skater. It's sick. Rad. And do we want to, uh, Virginia, do you want to jump in? Let us know your... Uh... <laughs> okay. You're very quiet I'm, over there. <laughs> I'm 19. I'm from Athens, Greece. My whole life I've lived in Athens. Um, I study photography and I'm also part of the free movement skateboarding team. Um, so do I have to say now how I found out about free movement? Yeah, why not? Why not? Let's go. For, let's go. For yeah, it's team. actually a fun story. It was around this time uh, last year, around May, and I was sitting in this in the same couch i'm sitting right now and i was pretending i was studying history for my exams but i was actually on my phone and i was scrolling <laughs> through instagram <laughs> and uh, at the time i was following skateism uh, oh. on instagram and you had just posted some pictures of the new t-shirts you made and the model for the t-shirts was Olympia, who is oh, yeah. also oh, part yes. of Free Movement. Uh, so I went to check her profile and I saw that in her bio she had the Free Movement skateboarding link. And I was like, what is this? So I searched it on his Instagram. And I, I, at first I didn't really understand what it was about, but then I started reading stuff and I started seeing the pictures. So I was like, do these guys teach the kids how to skate? And I, I got really excited. And I was like, OK, I have to DM them to see if they can teach me. Uh, but I was too old. I mean, I'm, I was 18 at the time. So again, too old to teach me. But Ruby told me that I can do some other stuff if I'm interested in that. So we started talking and here I am today. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. yeah, you've been, been teaching with us like, what, two? Since two, last two, October. Like, two like um, for, I don't know, so, what, October? When did you start? I think it was the 5th of last October. Oh, wow. Very <laughs> I remember the day, it was at La Drag. Cool. Mm -hmm. It was really nice. So how, how with everything, obviously, Will, if you want to give us a little bit of an insight into what's happening with free movement at the moment, obviously with the lockdown and how that's kind of changed your regular uh, operations, um, because obviously you're not all together and um, not all able to do the full kind of free movement uh, scheduling. Of course, yeah. So, um, yeah, uh, Greece was pretty early in locking down um, 
yeah, where as coronavirus like you know entered entered Europe, um, and it's been you know one of the countries that in theory has managed it better out of uh, out of the European ones. So yeah, at the time that um, at the time that the lockdown started, it all felt quite premature, like quite early compared to other European countries. So. I think Italy was the only one that was locked down at that point and then Greece was next and it felt like like what's going on like we had to stop sessions immediately like schools were closed down um and this was uh I don't know early early March I think um Mm -hmm. yeah and then um yeah and it was during our we've been planning for like a really long time this uh this week of trips out for kids uh you know the kids living in the camps so they you know, a trip's out in our new van, which all, you know, lots of people very, very kindly donated to support over Christmas time. Uh, one of the advantages of that van is it's got nine seats. So we could bring kids in that big nine seater van out to various skate parks around the city, kids that are stuck in the camps that really value that, um, you know, being in a different place, like seeing something new uh, and skateboarding with different people on different ramps. Uh, they Like the behavior of the kids is amazing in those places compared to the camps is so so good for them so yeah coronavirus unfortunately like made us have you know we were hoping to be able to do that and that week was cut short um and yeah so in the meantime uh the effects of the coronavirus on free movement skateboarding is of course we can't do sessions at the moment um and yeah it's been um yeah, I don't know. So we've just been trying to do lots of like fundraising. So like grant writing and stuff like that. We've done trying to do awareness raising. So letting people know about um, the effects of the coronavirus on uh, young refugees in Athens and sort of more generally just like what free movement do and just trying to build some awareness of our work. Um, so this is definitely part of that. And there's, you know, other media things coming out in the future. Um, and yeah uh being trying to be as well prepared as possible for um for when we can get back to starting sessions and that's involved some of like working with other uh skateboarding organizations like um you know we've been in these big skater stan uh skater stan have been organizing these uh group calls with lots of different um like skateboarding ngos and one of the things that's been discussed in that is how to promote how to do a sort of social distancing safe um uh like skateboarding curriculum like how to teach skateboarding within social Mm. distancing so it means that you know you can have that appropriate two meters between people and stuff like that um which is challenging because there's a lot of there's there's many many reasons why that's challenging but uh so we've been preparing for that when we start again um so yeah that's what's been going on for free movement at the moment what about um obviously it's we'll kind of get back to all of um all of the organizational side of things obviously it's a intense kind of thing to be doing all the time and also to then have your a little bit of time off which i'm sure for you guys is really important but then to have kind of you know all of these uh regulations and stuff put on your time what have you been up to personally during uh the coronavirus how have you been keeping yourself busy you doing anything creative? What do you do when you're not skating? You know, what's going on? Should I speak? Go on, yeah, go, Virginia. You get okay. it. Back. Well, at first, I was um, really negative about it. And I couldn't accept the fact that we have to stay at home. So I, I didn't do much. I was almost spending all of my time in my bed on my phone, which was not good. But then I realized that we won't leave our houses at least for the next month. So I just started working out again, um, making puzzles, drawing, uh, shooting with my sister, because we also uh, had started having uh, online school lessons. So I was inspired again to do some shootings. Um, I also started watching TV series again. Um, yeah. That's it. Take it. Had you taken a break from TV series? Hmm? You'd taken a break a break from watching TV series. Right now, what do you mean? <laughs> Before, don't worry. Um, no, I, I just didn't really have the time to watch TV series yeah. because I have many stuff to do in my routine. But now I had free time, so I could. 
Mm? What are you watching? What are you watching? I watched A Typical, if oh, you yeah. know it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I watched Anne with a Knee. Okay. Mindhunter. Uh, what else? Let's get other TV shows are available. <laughs> um habib how about you how have yeah. you been uh what have you been up to during this time uh at the first day at the first days i was really upset about it because yeah, my skateboard was also broken and mm. i was really upset about it and i said oh damn man it sucks it couldn't be worse and by the time slowly slowly I know, like, uh, it's hard to stay at home at, like 24 hours in seven days. And I was doing some stuff in home, like I was, you know, I, nowadays the young generation, they usually play the game, online games, video games. And I was playing games and watching YouTube. And I was, I used Duolingo to learn some Greek and English as well. So, I have I don't have any special thing in in my house to do. Usually I was yeah. playing games, watching videos. That's it. Nice. And uh and well. Yeah, uh, something. Yeah, I've been I don't know. I've I've managed to spend a lot of time doing um like lino cut printing, which is like the well, con convenient you are, Tosh. I see there's a team. <laughs> um, uh, that's yeah. I um I've been doing loads of stuff on like lino cut printing, which is really nice. So I'm back at my parents' house um in St Albans, where I grew up, and uh, you know, it's me and my parents. It's very very chill. There's a lot of time for myself. So and it's the same with everyone in lockdown. But yeah, that means I've been spending loads of time on that. Um, so yeah, I've been doing some um some bigger lino cuts which is really really nice some like a4 ones and yes indeed one of them has been has made its way onto a t-shirt which you can see behind us just over his uh you know yeah. his shoulder and uh if you are interested i think there's a link in the uh in the description there is. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah yeah the link's in the description it's an awesome shirt it's uh yeah a, a an original uh wascot it's ethical it? as well ethical yeah fair wear i believe is it uh probably something, yeah something like that <laughs> yeah. yeah that's brilliant that's brilliant awesome and what so what's the um and what's the uh, petition uh this is hashtag leave no one behind uh it is about uh the desperate need to um evacuate the refugee cramp refugee camps in greece um you know, to get people out of these incredibly cramped conditions where coronavirus uh, would spread really, really rapidly. Um, and, in the, you know, in the places that it has. So there, there's already been two camps. So uh, Malakasa and uh, Retsona uh, and, uh, and a hotel where which IOM were keeping people in. Um, where So, yeah, three three significant uh, sites where um, that have had to be quarantines where ref uh, where coronavirus is spreading really rapidly. Um, and, you know, when you sort of look at the, the conditions in these sort of camps, it's really, um, you know, they're unsanitary. They're very, very cramped. Lots and lots of people in a small space and the kind of conditions in which infectious diseases really thrive. And, um, yeah, it's just a... Uh, you know, it's got to be, uh, they need to be evacuated, the people living there and put into safe sanitary conditions. You know, there's so much space with like, you know, all of the tourism industry can't function. There's a lot of empty hotels. There are so many unfinished, uh, there's, you know, there's buildings that would be suitable for housing lots and lots of people as well. There's second homes. There's a lot, you know, we've seen over the last months what governments are capable of, uh, you know, in responding to a massive crisis and you know this response is done when you know when the economy is a is a threat and but unfortunately like that response hasn't been sufficient in supporting um migrants and refugees and yeah they so yeah the hashtag leave no one behind campaign is a petition people should be signing to uh to support this yeah amazing well i hope everyone uh, and how long does that run for do you know 
Uh, I don't know, Osh. Because um, <laughs> this, this, uh, this will be up on our YouTube uh, forever. So hopefully, um, long after this stream, people will still be able to uh, sign up um, and add their names to that petition. Um, what, Virginia, have you learned from working with Free Movement about working with young people, migrants, or just about yourself, maybe? Any lessons that you want to take? Um, well, uh, the first things are that, uh, especially Will, Olympia, every instructor we have there taught me what ca being kind is, what caring for each other means, um, what else? Uh, what understanding each other means, um, fe feeling included somewhere, um, not being judged. This this is something really important for me. And these guys taught me that. And um, I, I love you guys so much. I just love you. I just wanted to say it. That's it. Anyway, let's go back to the questions. Yeah, what was the question again? Uh, yeah, what lessons you'd learned about? Yeah, I mean, that was a that was a good yeah, one. That, that, the, this was these were the good things. Oh. Now, the, <laughs> yeah, I just Dumb learned shirt. a lot of things about how the refugee situation is in Greece because I actually had no idea about it. Um, I also learned about different religions, different backgrounds. Um, what else? Um, um, different languages too. Um, yeah, that's it. And mainly the situation with the refugees in Greece. Yeah. Has it Which made Because you... how old are you? Oh, 19. So how, how, what, has it made you uh, want to get more deeply involved in any of these things? Or has it made you think about uh, the next sort of step in your life at all with free movement? Um, I don't know. I, I'm interested in doing something um, with uh, the refugees in the future, but I'm not sure if, if it's gonna be my main job. Yeah. I'm, um, I'm gonna do it, I'm definitely gonna help in some way the refugees, but I'm still gonna do my thing. Yeah, of course. I mm -hmm. mean, Will, Will, you have, uh, you have um, a free movement now. Uh, how many, how many uh, instructors do you have currently? Uh... So it's five full-time members of staff and I think three sessional instructors that, yeah, sort of one hourly, yeah, hourly pay for the, for the sessions. And you've, uh, you obviously last year really kind of got the volunteer scheme um, rolling in a, in a strong way. So you have people um, coming over. I don't know if you want to just take this opportunity to kind of talk a bit about that because obviously it's a delayed at the moment and things may yeah. uh, yeah uh so yeah over the over um yeah 2019 the sort of international volunteer scheme really got um got started and yeah it's all credit to um yeah amber and zelia who were sort of really pushing that through um last year um and yeah so that's just had people uh fundraising and then coming to sort of spend a month um you know working at all the sessions um supporting supporting the kids and getting involved in other sort of organizational ways with us as well um and yeah obviously because of the coronavirus that's um that's meant that people can't necessarily travel well of course it's like yeah people can't travel and we can't even run sessions yet so that will have a big impact on our on our operations in in the coming year i mean there's not enough information to sort of say so much about the future yet unfortunately you know mm -mm. i hope it all yeah. works out yeah so um habib let's talk about um what you've learned from uh the free movement um kind of sessions and other than skateboarding tricks obviously um uh, obviously i haven't learned so much tricks 
and I am still stuck on Oli. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. <laughs> yeah, it's been that. like uh, five months I'm working on Oli. I'm still stuck on it. And <laughs> I have learned so many things, like helping each, helping each other, caring for each other. Like he said, hashtag leave no one behind. Like we don't leave no one behind. We help everyone. And yeah, I pretty like I pretty love these guys and they're really cool guys and I don't know I was trying to do something about like at least I can help some guys some refugee guys I'm a refugee as well so I I really know what they feel here in Greece or in any Greek uh, European countries so skateboarding make them feel happy at least they forgot what they have threw away behind and yeah skateboarding is something for me like it's it gives me some hope happiness for me and these guys really help me to be happy and i really love them it's really beautiful yeah, it's, uh, it's, we're, we're like you know as with virginia like we are really really lucky to have you man because you're so committed to coming to the sessions Thank you've been you. committed to like helping with the translation in sessions you like skate yourself all the time and have learned you say you're struggling with ollies but i've seen you do good ollies i've definitely seen you do good shove it's like yeah I mean, man like, i don't know you're ripping it's really good and like i mean we appreciate having you here i'm trying my best to help to help you and it's a ref refugee children and yeah it's uh, good for me too like when i came there i see children i help them and i talk with them and I, as you said translating my english not that good to be a translator but i'm trying my best to help you and to help guy, the other guys mm. and yeah it give me some, it motivates me i know i don't know okay. how, how to say it i can't explain it because no we appreciate it a lot man i think like with some of the younger ones there's obviously like they've you know they've been through a lot of these really difficult like traumatic struggles that you know uh change their behavior like with some of the younger kids their their behavioral problems are like pretty serious and i think your capacity to you know to translate and help and you know speak to them in in farsi and help them understand what to do and like you know you're 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 better at that than any of us ever will be because you can speak Farsi and you understand what they have been through. And, you know, we really appreciate that. Uh, I don't know what to say, but thank you very much. Thank you. And I am really happy to do as much I can for you guys. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm trying my best to help somehow. You do it well. <laughs> yeah, man. Sounds like you're a real key part of, uh, of this. And, um, Virginia as well, like how have you, um, how have you seen the, uh, you know, you're, 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 you're from Athens originally, I, I suppose, mm -hmm. and you're a skater. And so it's interesting to talk a little bit about the, uh, the skate scene for women, women X in Greece and how yeah, that's okay. kind of changed. Um, I'm, I'm not an actual skater. I just started when I, started with free movement because I did I never skated before I had the skateboard but I didn't know how to do tricks uh, so I have I have been uh, a few times to skate parks uh, but for those little times I've been there the like 90 percent of people who I have seen there are boys or men so uh, uh, almost no girls skate uh, at our skate parks. I haven't really seen any girls. So yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe it's not like that every time, but I don't know. Yeah, I, th I think there are, uh, well, maybe you can speak a bit to this as well. Obviously, Ruby, um, your co-founder, partner, um, not romantic professional partner, partner yeah professional everyone partner. always brings me together professional <laughs> business partner like <laughs> <laughs> partner in, uh, in free movement she's probably uh, watching i love her dearly um, um yeah um you know that we like even over the last uh year i think uh there are more 
women picking up skateboards in uh, in Athens. Um, until recently, they were doing the women's sessions um, as well, I think, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, I think uh, it would be awesome to see yeah, more and more support out there for, for yeah. That, those Hopefully, seats. this is going to change. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to start some workshops in Athens, probably this summer. Uh, with only girls to support them and help them become more brave to start skating. But I'm gonna do it with, in a combination with photography. So I'm gonna have some photography workshops. Uh, so I'm gonna get some cameras and I'm gonna give them to the girls. So mm -hmm. I, I thought that in this way, for example, we will have five girls uh, skating and then uh, five girls taking pictures. So I think that the girls who will take the pictures will be uh, will support the other girls to do better and start uh, trying new tricks so that they will take the pictures too. So I thought it in this way that it would help. So yeah. Yeah, that's an awesome idea. And you, I mean, you've got a, there's a, what's the, what's the um, percentage of uh, uh, women to boys to girls, women to men in the, in the sessions, Will? Uh, uh, it's, uh, go on, go on, Virginia. Yes, no, yeah, no, you, got it. You, say, you can explain it. I can explain it really that way. Just the percentage is, is, uh, it's, it's about 45, 45% uh, women to, to men in our sessions. Um, but um, I, I don't know the exact number, but it's, it's about that. Yeah. So just a, a little bit more boys involved. Um, but yeah, Virginia's been involved in uh, this, um, you got that, that funding coming or the, at least the support through the, the skate stand thing. Can you just like tell us about that a little bit, Virginia? I mean, yeah. it's, it's a project you've mentioned, but uh, me. A woman win with good boots, didn't they start this whole thing? With their role models. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so they chose um, 25 girls to become uh, role models from uh, the Netherlands, Greece, and Germany, I think, and England. So they chose 25 girls, I'm one of them. And uh, each uh, woman will do her own workshop. And I chose to do uh, that that I explained before with photography and skateboarding. So awesome. Perfect. It's awesome. Right. So we uh, we um, we have uh, one question from uh, from a member of the audience. Everyone, Oof. Layla Garboza. Oh, yeah. I think you know her, Will. I do, I do. She sent me a text that is <laughs> funny just now. I wonder if it's the same question, but please read the question out. She said, have you thought of doing some kind of exercise booklet to keep kids busy and not feel so confined as not everyone has internet access? Yeah, um, unfortunately. Yeah, so we've, we've been working on lots of different resources and trying to get them to participants. There are a lot of challenges with that, like kids won't necessarily have access to a printer coloring pencils or like um yeah or paper to put in the printer um so you know everything that we put out for the kids to do is kind of is, is challenging to to give them things that you know they will have the resources for um mm -hmm. But that said, uh, very soon there is a YouTube series that we'll be um, we'll be releasing with different activities um, taught by various various little various experts and friends of the project. Um, yeah, so we're trying to give the kids things to stimulate them and keep them edu educationally involved um, like during this time. Uh, but it is just it's difficult consider considering the resources. But um, yeah, if you look on our Instagram, there's a uh, there's um, there's some like fun things to make and fun things to do for those that do have the resources, and for those that don't, we're trying to provide other stuff as well. The challenging thing is as well, just like the number of 
kids that we teach with with phone access and also due to like child protection and like safeguarding stuff we can't always be in touch with them we have to be in touch with their parents which often then requires another translator and messages to be translated there's a lot of issues between us and speaking directly with the people we work with um outside of sessions but we've been doing what we can to be in touch with people that's awesome though how does um how does it how does it kind of um uh look over there i mean you say there's not enough information but how does it how does it kind of look at the moment in terms of your plans of getting back over to to athens do you have any thoughts on so i've heard that um so lockdown is being released in like a series of phases and yeah. one of the phases towards the end of june is allowing international flights uh back in at which point um i'll be able to join um yeah so that would be cool <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll come back then and i think around then sessions will start again when did you say uh the end of june is when international ah, flights okay. allowed mm. it. So it's quite a long time mm. <laughs> Yeah, that's in theory. That's when it might happen. We'll see. Um, yeah. Are you still in lockdown there? Yeah. Um, so in the UK, it's um, you're allowed out to exercise, but uh, but and you know go to the shop and but yeah, that's it. Uh, there's no like, yeah, it's not as open as Greece is just yet. It's worth yeah, it's worth contextualizing a little bit maybe with uh, Virginia what it or and Habib what it's like there at the moment because obviously they're quite um they're ahead in terms of opening up since the last few days, right? Mhm. Mm uh well, uh on Monday uh, uh we started going outside again. Uh, some small shops uh, opened again but i don't think it's re a really good idea because people in greece um are not don't take it that seriously and they go all the time outside for example i went at five o'clock today for a walk and the parks were full of people and the squares were full of people so we stayed for almost two months in the house and I think we'll, we're going to destroy now our try for not um, expanding the virus so yeah we'll see how it goes but I don't I don't really trust Greek people that's it <laughs> <laughs> very honest yeah yeah Greek, it's, Greek answer it's true that's true when I was locked down in quarantine because of virus I was going out for shopping, like berry to bring breads or to pharmacy. And there was people everywhere. Like it was unbelievable. I was living in home three days, once in three days. Yeah. One time in three days or two times in three days because to go and shop or market to buy some stuff for home and kitchen. And that's it. And there was a lot of people in park and usually people have pets, pets uh, that take them five times out in 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 day. Like That's if there's true. five people, if there's five people in house, each of them take the dog <laughs> out five times. Like I think the dog gets that. Oh come on, you got to be kidding! I got to, I, I I got to have a rest. <laughs> it's, a good, it's a good time to be a dog for sure. <laughs> <laughs> um like for dogs it's like that you know they get you know 24 hour attention for the first time in uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> perfect time to be a dog <laughs> yeah do, do you uh do you guys have any questions for each other obviously not a you know just uh, i don't know if uh, you want to use this opportunity to ask the questions you've always wanted to ask one another. oh yeah uh, i want to say something for to virginia uh, yeah. I heard something like uh, she she I she she told me I cut up my hair and I I asked her oh why would you do that she said I cut it and I donated to an organization do uh, yeah. the uh, and I the organization the children with cancer like something mm -hmm. I don't know I I really I was really happy I heard it and I said oh my god what really. <laughs> Wish I had that yeah. long hair and I cut it's, it. It's actually the second time uh, this year I donated my hair. 
Also, it's not only because I wanted to donate them. I was uh, I wanted to cut my hair and shave my head since primary school, but I always thought that I would get bullied in school. So I never tried it because of stereotypes. So yeah, that's that, well, but it's true. That's pretty <laughs> rad. Amazing, Virginia. Nice. nice. Yeah, it looks good, by the way. It looks really good. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I really like it too. It's really awesome not to have hair. I actually ha I, I never remember myself not having long hair and it's really tiring so I'm gonna keep it like that for probably the next year for sure Sweet. there's no need to need so much shampoos for hair <laughs> yeah. easy to wash yeah that's true yeah. <laughs> you have yeah. a tower and you just have a towel and it's like vroom, vroom, like dry yep. that's like yeah. this is exactly dry. That's good stuff. <laughs> yeah can't wait to go to the beach. To yeah. oh, I want to experience that too. Greek summers are perfect. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Ruby, uh, Ruby's uh, jumped into the to the uh, comments and says, "You look amazing, Virginia." Zelia. Thank you. <laughs> Thank okay, you. That's the that's the support. That is the support right Thank there. Thank you. Beautiful teamwork. <laughs> yeah. What about um? I don't know. We uh we have. If anyone else from the uh, audience in the Q and A and the live chat wants to ask any questions, we're here for them. But uh, maybe we want to talk a little bit about skating in Athens a bit more. I don't know. Like, where's your favorite spots? Where, where's your favorite place to skate, Habib? Oh, my favorite uh, spot for a skate is uh, Maurice Skate Park. It's in the Irini Station. And my second, my second one is there is a school to my, close to my house. There is a big park. I usually go there, but now it's far from me because I moved my house uh, uh, in between the quarantine virus uh, lockdown. So yeah. now I'm far from there. So now my first and second uh, favorite spot is Maurice's skate park. First and second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because there is no, I have no... Uh, Second choice, yeah. The one and only. <laughs> nice. <laughs> cool. And what uh, what about you, Virginia? My favorite spot. <laughs> I don't have any. I don't. I go to skate by myself. And uh, in the area that I live, we don't have any skate park, so I don't go. And the truth is that if I wasn't with free movement, I would not try. Like I would go. I would have gone out for once to try it and then I would quit because I'm not good at it. No, I, no. I think I'm not fearless enough. And if I had actually started skateboarding when I was younger, I would definitely, I would definitely be good at it now, but I, I, I'm not fearless, okay? I, I can't, I don't, <laughs> I don't know, I just can't do it. But it's really fun riding with the kids and the rest of the instructors. I really enjoy it. And I can help in other ways too. So it's fine if I can help with the tricks. Well, I don't have a question for you. I'd like to hear about um, when you, you know, in with photography, you know, your all your photography work, like what inspired you? What have you been studying? Like, I don't know. Uh, I'd just like to hear about your photography a little bit more. Okay. What kind of style well, are you going for? Tell me. Uh, the truth is that my whole life, I, I always wanted to become a kindergarten, kindergarten teacher. Is this what it's called? Yeah. yeah. Uh, but then I realized when I became 16, how bad our school education in Greece is. So I decided that I don't want to go through it. So I really liked photography. I always liked it, but I never saw it as a job because my parents too thought that you cannot have it as a job. So it was really hard to tell them too that I want to become a photographer. But eventually I started studying um, in October, last, last October. Um, you asked me what inspires me? Yeah. Uh, you, you take some really cool photos that have been you know, some, you of the photos, some of the photos I've seen of yours where you have like your friends dressed up mm -hmm. in a certain way, like that stuff's sick. Like, that's Thank you. 
Well, the thing is that I can't express myself in any other way. I'm not good with <laughs> speaking. Okay. It's really hard, hard for me. So the only way I can uh, express my feelings is through photography. Um, so yeah, I really like expressing my, myself this way. And I, I just enjoy so much the whole thing, like picking up the models, thinking of the concept, makeup, hair, uh, doing the scene and like taking the pictures and then editing them. I just really enjoy it. And so, I really <laughs> like inspiring other people to this way. So that's it. Have you, uh, how, do you how do you see the, um, the workshops and photography inspiring the young people with at Free Movement? What are you kind of hoping they come away with? Um, the thing is that they, I don't think they have any access um, to the internet and especially in photography. So I thought that it, it, I'm going to show them uh, some works of skate photographers to, to get inspired. And we're also going to make a pinhole camera. And I also thought maybe we could paint I could buy grip tapes and we could paint on them. Um, nice. Yeah, that would be nice. Um, I don't know, I just really want to give the opportunity to the girls to um, do things with photography because I don't think they really have access to it and I really enjoy it. So I thought that it would be nice to give them the opportunity to. We also might find some new times there. So you never know. Nice. So, I, uh, I don't know, so I was thinking, Virginia spoke a little bit about like general hopes for the future and, you know, perhaps work and stuff like that. And I don't know, Habib, what, uh, what are your hopes for the future, Habib? Uh, for future, um... You know, if you if you have seen my profile on Instagram, I really love classic cars, and so I really think about classic cars, and and yeah, uh, in the future, if I, I could, I want, to, I really want to be a mechanic car, mechanic of cars. Cool. Yeah. That's it, man. No, that's awesome. If and you want of course, it's skateboarder. <laughs> and a skateboarder, pro skater with a. Uh... Yeah, skateboard while in uh, my garage. <laughs> yeah, the dream. <laughs> Make the dream real. Yeah. Yeah, man. Um, well, when the van breaks down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm, I'm yeah, yeah, I will help you. Next, I will so. really help you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, okay, we have another uh, another question, but just quickly, let's uh, let's do this uh, plug again because people jump in and out throughout. Will, what you got? promoting today free movement uh, well uh i have been working a lot on lino cuts over this isolation time of uh, isolation and one of them is uh depicts um the schisto camp where we work twice a week it's a session there and uh, yeah a, a lino cut of that has made its way onto a t-shirt you can get from it's this everpress.com and it's the one that's behind osh right now yo, 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 uh, yo, yo, link yo. is below if you are watching and you want a t-shirt you know what to do <laughs> support this amazing organization um yeah if you can and then the petition yeah go on um so um yeah, well, if, if you can't afford to buy a T-shirt, I'd still be really grateful if you could um, sign the petition, uh, which is uh, also in a link uh, below. Uh, leave no one behind. It's about um, uh, evacuating uh, the refugee camps in Greece that are grossly overfilled. I wrote down some stats that I didn't say yet. Uh, the total island refugee camp capacity is 6,000, but there are 35,000 people in those refugee camps. This is a few across a few different islands. Um, so, you know, that's incredible overcrowding and uh, uh, conditions in which contagious diseases, diseases like coronavirus will spread really, really dangerously. A lot of people are at great risk and these people need to be evacuated immediately. Uh, 
put into safe accommodation. All of the empty hotels are empty because coronavirus is stopping international travel. These spaces need to be used to safe, safely house people. Um, so please sign the link, um, yeah, sign the petition in the link. And there's also the option, if you'd like, to donate. Um, we'd be grateful. The straightforward, yeah, no strings attached. Just d- donate. Just throw yeah. money at you. Yeah. Um, right, well, so we have this, uh, we have a question from Vereniki Maz um, asking, how, what, what's your personal experience with the young kids and how do you communicate with them and gain their trust the first times you meet them? How do you bring them on, onto the skateboard? How do you me- develop those relationships at the beginning of session? Who's gonna answer? You are. Uh, you are. <laughs> <laughs> Don't pretend you didn't want to that's, answer. That's my friend asking. <laughs> Hi, Veronique. Ah. Uh, yes, uh, yes. Well, um, at first, you have to say to them kindly to wear their pads <laughs> and maybe help them. Some of them uh, might feel uncomfortable, so you have to be kind with, the, with them. Um, and then you have to start, if, if it's their first time, you really have to be with them all the time, if they ask you to. Uh, and just show them the first steps and just be careful with them, not to get hurt. Again, talk to them if they feel like that's it. I, I don't know if anyone wants to add something. Abi, what's been your experience when you've helped in? Oh, like, what's it like? My experience, like, I really like to uh, uh, spend my time with children, with kids, and yeah, I really love kids. And I'm, I'm not good really. I'm, I'm not really good to communicate with them, but I really love them. And skateboard part, and when I came to free movement with them. Like uh, when I see kids, I try to help them, and as uh, Virginia said, I help them to not get hurt. And to, so somewhere I translate for them something, and I teach them the basic, uh, the basic things like how to step on skateboard, mm-hmm. how to stay, uh, stay balanced. Mm-hmm. So I have experienced like I have experienced happiness with them, like hope, love. Hmm. Wow, that's great, man. Yeah, I would say just from my experience, like obviously, you know, Virginia and Habib both have, you know, Greek and Farsi, very, very useful in our sessions. Um, and, you know, English is sometimes useful. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like it requires, um, for me, a lot of the communication we do is very, very visual, very, very like, very simple, clear one word instructions, like, and, and alongside like pointing um moving my feet moving the kids foot with my hands going like that and putting the feet where they need to go um you become like you know have the facial dexterity of a clown you know just like, <laughs> like no, no, no. um it's good it's, it's a, it, it, but the more you kind of entertain them and keep their attention with that sort of thing you can get them to copy you so if a kid needs to go down a ramp and you get them you have you like put their head where it needs to go to go down the hill and you pull their arm <laughs> go like that they're like they'll stay on if they're like, like this way, <laughs> they'll fall so yeah it's uh very very physical and uh practical i would say and less verbal at times is how we communicate was there another element to that question i can't remember uh how do you gain trust as well but um Uh, yeah, but I get. I think uh, it's uh, potentially been answered there. One oh, thing, yeah. just about about trust. Like one thing I would say is just that, like these kids are like. What say to say you're teaching a kid to drop in on a quarter pipe. Like they're in a very very vulnerable and scary position. And like if you're taking their hands and supporting them, there's no better way to build trust with a kid uh, than you know to physically support them as they do something scary and then they build their confidence and build their trust in you at the same time uh, you know doing that scary thing and um, yeah I don't know I think it, it this ultimately 
uh, you know, helps towards building a really strong relationship between the instructors and the young people we work with. And, um, you know, I feel I feel lucky to sort of know the young people we work with closely because of that. It's good. And maybe this is a nice opportunity to talk as well a little bit more about anyone who obviously everyone has quite a lot of free time on their hands and people um, people have been um, you know, like so many people since Skater Stand, the success there, Skate Pal, Free Movement, I mean, countless projects now, but so many people have been thinking about doing it. And this is a kind of time where people can get those ideas a little bit more um, kind of congealed and developed. So what maybe advice do you have for anyone who might be thinking about starting their own project? Um, cool. Sorry, sprang that one on you. Yeah. <laughs> oof. <laughs> that's all right um i would say like it doesn't take a lot we i was lucky enough to get funding to like run a project that costs money and is my full-time job and is moving to greece with like you know some money to live on and a van and like you know it's an expense an expensive thing to do i was very very fortunate and um you know we've done big and good things with it quite quickly but like if you want to do you know this is that's a big scale thing and there's such value in just like getting skateboards in the you know the situation you are uh and if you want to support a certain group of people that really need it uh you know get some skateboards and go and teach them to skate you know people will be very very grateful of it and the skateboarding community sort of more globally is generally very very supportive of these sort of things like you will be able hopefully through you know, through your local skate scene, your skate shop, your skate parks, ask for old boards, trucks, wheels and everything. And I would say generally you'll be able to get the donations together to have a few skateboards and just teach the kids in your locality. And if you want to push it to something bigger to get some funding and support, that's brilliant. And, uh, you know, I'm sure a lot of people will, uh, you know, will support you, but like, just get out there and do it. Like you can do it on a small scale. It's, it shouldn't be an inaccessible big thing. It should be like a thing that anyone can do to support people that needs people that people that you think will benefit from skateboarding. They should be supported. And I guess ask for help. Like ask if you have contacts, shops who may have old boards that people throw away or anything to gather equipment. Mm -hmm. More people than you think are willing to join and help out these kind of causes. Mm -hmm. Like I, you know. How many people are watching this? <laughs> it's been, it's kind of hovering around 20 for, but people drop in and come out and come in and come out. Well, if, if any of those 20 people do want to um, start a skateboarding charity, uh, you know, just like message us, we'd be very, like any, everyone at Free Movement would be very, very happy to answer questions about this sort of thing and provide support. Like there's no, there's absolutely no desire to have like, and it, like like skateboard charities should just be like everyone should be supporting everyone to make this grow and help people because it's you know it's it's just the right thing. <laughs> like, yeah. that makes sense. And on the subject of support, buy a t-shirt from the Ever Press link, sign the petition, donate to Free Movement. Uh, we have a question from uh, Ruby Matea again. <laughs> um, oh God. Who's wondering, wondering? She's wondering. She's wondering. Very. Uh, she. She's. She's. She needs to know. As we're, free movement, the only skateboarding project working in refugee camps. She thinks, as far as we know. Can you speak about how the sessions in the camps differ from public sessions or sessions at skate parks? Uh, Habib, have you been to many sessions in the camps? Uh, no, not in camps, but I have only been in Velas and the one time in Marisi camp, in Marisi Park. Yeah, one. okay, sure, sure. Yeah. Um, well, tell me, how about you can tell us about the, the Velas session then? Like, how do you find uh, that? What's your experience of it? The Velas session is like, there is a young guys and when I, like, the you know, it's the first time I saw you guys there. Yeah, I remember. It was in 2018. So I really find it ha find it like uh, really good, happy. Like uh, when I go there, like I don't know how to say it, but I you know I'm confused. 
a little bit. It's all good, it's all good. Um, all right, and then, well, so I would say to sort of contrast that sort of city session experience is a bit more like public and we have different partner organizations, like different groups of young people come. So Velos is, you know, brings a group of uh, sort of generally older guys, kind of like 15 to 20, maybe a bit older. Um, is sort of the group that come from uh, come from Velos and then maybe there'll be, um, yeah, other, other partner organizations bring groups of young people. Uh, previously, we've been partnered with some of the, uh, some of the squats have been bringing people. Um, I'm not going to get into the, like some of the squats were evicted last year that we worked closely with, which was really, really crap. Like, yeah, new democracies election and some of the time under Saritza as well. There was a lot of, uh, yeah, a lot of um, uh, evicting squats, which is really crap because a lot of, well, for many, many reasons is really, really inhumane, but that's another story. So, City centre ones with lots of different organisations coming, lots of kids mixing um, and also real potential for local kids to go as well. A lot of um, at one of the uh, sessions we have, we, we tend to run it as uh, the local primary school finishes. So some Greek kids come along as well as all of the young uh, sort of kids from migrant backgrounds. And that integration is something that we really, really value. Um, I think it's really good for people just to skate together and share the space. To also see like the parents of uh, Greek kids and the parents of migrant kids mix is a beautiful thing. It's like really, really special. Um, and then, yeah, from comparing that to the camps uh, for that for that point about integration is, um, you know, it's literally impossible for like Greek families. I'd be very surprised if you could find one that would want their kids to go to a refugee camp to learn skateboard, but they would physically be unable to anyway, simply because mm. like it's, they're shut off they're closed um and yeah in terms of like the sort of spaces we teach in in camps that well it's, it's uh it's mixed but some of them are a little bit more closed in generally the camps are over like very very like overly populated very busy um and yeah it kind of in that way it can be challenging to manage the space we have with the ramps we have and with the kids that are there it's quite tight um and yeah i don't know how do you find it virginia you've done both um about the camp i feel like the harder the hardest hardest part is for example uh when we have uh teaching the older kids uh, the little kids come and you just can't control them there there are so many you just if, even if you tell them to kindly to leave they just don't and the same thing happens when we teach the little, the little kids, then the bigger ones come and again, yeah. they won't leave. So you can do anything about it. They just keep on coming and coming. So yeah, I think the camps are the hardest uh, sessions to control, uh, but uh, the parts are really enjoyable. I really like being there. The kids are, really happy to be there too so it's really nice to see them skating there and be supportive of each other so yeah there's actually a big difference between the camp and the parks yeah absolutely mm -hmm. it takes kind of i don't know i, I think we we six seven of us being 100% occupied like really busy whilst we uh whilst we teach in the camps you know like keeping kids safe out of the way to teach some to have someone doing the registering which is you know making sure the right kids are entering that session because other kids will be able to learn the next uh a few days later that week usually um and you know behave managing behavior keeping it safe it's um it's pretty constant you know it's like it's a real it's like an hour and a half long session and the whole time your brain is going like at full speed and exactly calm afterwards it takes a it takes a lot of like it takes almost training to learn to like calm yourself after one of those sessions it's quite challenging yeah so um 
what about in i mean we're doing this all obviously to raise support for free movement especially during this time we have the merch link i feel like i'm you know i appreciate it man if you're watching and you want to buy a t-shirt please do (laughs) ever press yeah yeah will did that lino cut himself in a shed with his old these hands these hands um hey hey. (laughs) (laughs) and um and there's the petition well, if you want to, if you want to talk a little bit about the uh, situation again, just quickly for anyone who's just joined. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, um, there's a lot of really, really overcrowded uh, refugee camps in Greece, and uh, the situation is really, really, uh, it's unhygienic. It's very, very cramped, and you know, we're really, we're really conscious that if coronavirus is to get into those places, it's going to spread really rapidly, and um, you know potentially could cause like a you know real real tragedy it's already existed in um two camps and one um sort of refugee supporting hotel uh yeah so we are asking for um we're demanding that uh, the camps are um evacuated people are put into hotels um which are you know empty because there are no tourists coming in at the moment uh, so it's hashtag leave no one behind. That's the petition. The link is below. Uh, I really appreciate it if you could sign it. And yeah, um, if also just like people, if you can just try and like start these conversations with people like outside of uh, outside of the sort of normal area of the realm of people that might care about like uh, migrants and stuff, get these conversations started in your local skate park, you know, like it's really, really important that people are aware of what's happening uh, here on the southern end, southern frontier of Europe. You know, it's, uh, there's some brutal things happening and people should know about it. And of course, you can just donate directly to free movement skateboarding dot com <laughs> forward slash donate. Um, yeah. And uh, on the subject of support as well, um, Habib, Virginia, is there anyone you want to thank for supporting free movement or yourselves or anything at this at, at this point uh, i said it before that and i said it yesterday to will do that i'm really thankful for being in this team and being around around those people who are really supportive and kind and yeah that's it i really love you all <laughs> <laughs> and yeah it's being like more than two years, I am. I am. I know. I. I got no. I got to know these guys, and they're, I really love them. They're really good and beautiful people. And yeah, uh, I really thankful. I'm really thankful that I'm with them, and I know them. I have such a friends. Like they're really friendly. They're really kind, and I'm really happy. And yeah, thank you guys. I appreciate it for every help you you helped me. And I don't know what to say more. I mean, I can't explain my feelings as much I do. <laughs> it's both of you guys. That is, um, you know, we're really, really grateful to like have people that are you know committed to committed to sort of working and supporting with us and like someone who just like loves learning skateboarding as much as you know Habib especially like pushing skateboarding so much and like Virginia helping out in the session so much it's like re- we're really grateful and like I'm we feel very very <laughs> lucky to have you guys like involved and also just like for tonight like thank you for your time like thank you for wanting to do this it's uh thank it's you really too. Cool. It's appreciated um, um yeah yeah otherwise like uh I'd like to thank anyone that like ever supported free movement with uh, donations um or ever came and volunteered uh anyone that sort of ever you know there's plenty of people that have done a lot for this project like skate shops as well um really really grateful to like um laria in st albans to um ministry of concrete color um in in athens those guys have been very supportive and uh and why not you you dear oshin osh my, my good old friend who i've known for a good uh good 15 years is um his magazine skatism has done an awful lot for free movement too um yeah i feel very very lucky to be able to do this job um i really like it's very very nice to do something that i like really care about that is also skateboarding 
um yeah so uh i oh, i should really thank help refugees who are like help refugees are a big big funder of uh of free movement skateboarding since the start and uh you know their support has made this possible so uh any any help refugees folks watching thank you very much go check out help refugees um yeah i feel honored to be able to know you will for so long and to be able to have met here and habib this evening and to talk to you about this stuff it's been really awesome and i hope everyone who's watched it and who will watch it um yeah hello to the future hello to the future as it is inspired nice to meet you guys <laughs> <laughs> Go buy our merch. Yeah. <laughs> link in bio. <laughs> yeah, link in bio. Merch, petition, donate. Um, anything else from anyone? That's an hour. That's uh, yeah, probably dinner time. It's an hour and 10 minutes. I've got fish now, and chips, an incredibly English dinner. <laughs> that's gonna, they're going to be cold, mate. Yeah. <laughs> um, thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Um, All right. Thanks. Bye, guys.